Hi, I'm John Slattery and you're very welcome along to Carfile. Now each week in the programme we take three cars from a different class and test them for practicality, performance, styling and of course value for money. And this week is the turn of the first timers. Now for those of you who are buying your very first car, you probably won't be able to afford an Aston Martin. And if you are, well, there's no point in you watching the end of the programme. Unless of course it makes you feel good, which is fine by me. But back to today and back to reality. And our choice of three cars are all, well, some may say cute, but definitely practical and most importantly, easy on the pocket. This week we have the Fiat Cinchento, the Deo Matiz, and the Ford Fiesta. And of course, Brendan Coogan will be here with his alternative car. Well, John, this week I've gone slightly over budget with this Volkswagen Lupo TDI PD Sport. Join me later in the show to see if there is much point to a small diesel car. Now, before we get down to the testing, let's see what our three cars have to offer our potential first-time buyers. Up first is the Ford Fiesta 1.3 Finesse. Now, the old Fiesta was always praised for its great handling. Unfortunately, though, its practicality wasn't. So with this new model, Ford have pulled out all the stops and made enough room in the back for even the BFG. And the really great news is that Fiesta still handles pretty well. In terms of pricing, the Fiesta is the most expensive of our three test cars, weighing in at just under £8,000. Next up is the smiley face Deo Matiz. Powered by an 800cc engine, this car is ideal for scooting around town and nipping out to see your mates. If your budget is really tight, then the Matiz will set you back just under £7,000. And if you're still not sold, it also comes with an excellent warranty and service package. Our final car this week is the Fiat Cinchento Maya. It has been described as cute and ideal to be seen around town in. Whether that's true, well, I leave up to you. Power comes from a 1.1 liter engine that produces 54 brake horsepower. The Maya is also this week's cheapest car, just under 5,000 pounds. All in all, the Maya looks like a tempting package, but is it all front and no trousers? Well, there's only one way to see. This week's cars have been picked not only for style, but also because they offer the best way for first time drivers to get their hands on a car and get it out in the road. With that in mind, let's have a look and see which one of our three cars, in our opinion, is the best one to own. First up, it's the Ford Fiesta Finesse. Now at first glance, you might mistake this for its bigger brother, the Focus. Both have angular headlamps, chiseled front ends, and long rear taillight clusters. But where the two differ is, the Focus looks aggressive, whereas the Fiesta looks kind of cute. Now, if I was a girl, not saying that I am, but if I was a girl, and let's say the Fiesta was a dog, well, I'd want to run up, turn it on its roof, and rub its belly. Now that's not a bad thing, unless of course you're a young male driver. Not many of them will want to own one of these cars, unless it's your mom's and of course you've passed your driving test. Oh, and for the record, I'd like to note it that none of the cars or the animals were harmed in the making of this week's car file. If we were giving awards out for being cute, then the Deo Matiz would run the Fiesta pretty close. Although the Matiz is not much more than a box with a wheel at each corner, it somehow manages to win you over, and I think that's mainly down to the front end. The bonnet line is drawn in in such a way that it looks like a big smile between the two headlights. Very cute. Unfortunately, the rest of the car can't match the style of the front. For a start, the wheels look like they're tiny plates that would look more at home in your cupboard than on a car. The door panels look too big, the rear end is bland, and overall it looks tiny. But on the plus side, you do get a steel tailpipe, and the SE version comes with front fog lights. Unlike the Fiesta Matiz, the Fiat Cinchento looks dated. Don't get me wrong, there was probably a time when the Cinchento was the height of fashion, but trust me, that was a long time ago. The front isn't too bad, it's curvy and everything is in the right place. While the back of the car is pretty much what you see, it's straight down, in fact, it's flat. Okay, so we want small cars, but there's no need to simply slice off the back end. Whatever happened to those creative Italian curves? In terms of style, it's a pretty close thing between the two very cute cars, the Fiesta and the Matiz. First place, however, goes to the Fiesta. Although it is basically a scaled-down Focus and isn't exactly revolutionary, it's still both stylish and, of course, cute. So second goes to the Matiz. It might have a nice front end, but the rest of the car is a bit dull and lifeless compared to the Fiesta. Third and last is the Cinchento. Unlike the other two cars, it doesn't really have any redeeming features. It looks dated, out of proportion and dull. The good news for Fiat is that there is a replacement on the way, imaginatively named Gingo. We've established that our cars are pretty stylish and that you wouldn't be too embarrassed to be seen out in them. But the real question is, would you be ashamed to take your friends for a drive? Let's find out. 
First up, we have the Cinchento. And what can we say? In terms of simplicity of layout, the Cinchento is okay. All the dials, or should I say, dial is easy to read. The controls for the heater and your warning lights are big enough to bring back memories of playing with your toys. I do have a problem with the stereo. It's low down and the controls are quite fiddly, especially when compared to the rest of the instrumentation. The plastics, as you would expect, aren't great, but remember, you are paying less than six grand for this car. In terms of fit and finish, as I said earlier, a few thousand miles may prove to be too much. Only time will tell. And should you be a bit on the tall side, don't worry, because unlike small cars of the past, there is enough leg room in the front for people over six foot. Crossing over two grand more than the Cicento, the Fiesta's interior is clearly more substantial. Like the previous generation, the car's overall ergonomics are good and everything is close to hand. Where this generation differs is in the styling. Like most of today's manufacturers, the interior is very Germanic, following the trends of VW and Audi. It is a solid and quality look, even if some of the plastics aren't of the highest quality. The driving position is good with height adjustment for the driver's seat, while the steering wheel adjusts for rake but not reach. The Matiza's stylish exterior is carried over to its interior. Despite being pretty simple, there are a few nice little touches like the dials ringed in blue. The controls are clear and easy to use thanks to these absolutely massive buttons. And like the Fiat, the controls in the stereo are fiddly and they may distract you when you're actually driving. Cabin space is very airy and you don't get an enclosed feeling like you get in other small cars. Cabin finish, however, isn't the best. The materials that they have used are, let's say, a bit cheap and a bit flimsy. But you know, you do get what you pay for. Driving position? Well, I have to say it's pretty good. And you are quite high up for such a small car. And you will fit a six foot plus person in here, but that means you're not going to have a huge amount of room in the back. One thing I do not like about this car is the fact that well, the steering wheel and the seat do not adjust for height. And for someone like me who likes to settle into a driving position, well, I would find that a bit of a pain. Once again, spending the extra money counts as the Fiesta comes out in top. Not only does the interior look better, it's easier to use, and you feel it won't fall apart after a few thousand miles. Second place is a close call, with both the Cicento and the Matiz having similar interiors. For me, though, the winner is the Matiz, and that's mainly because it feels it will last longer. Having said that, Fiat haven't done a bad job with the interior. Now, although all of our three cars are very small, they'll still be used by many for days out and trips to the shop. So with that in mind, let's have a look and see which one of our cars is the most practical, starting with the Fiat Cinchento and around the back. Now, I had imagined the boot to be small, but to be honest, I had no idea it was going to be this small. It's absolutely tiny. If you live on your own and you go to the shops for a few bits and pieces, as you can see, you'll be lucky if you can fit it all in. Um, yes, you will be lucky if you can fit it all in. Otherwise, I think you're going to have to buy yourself a trailer, and a small trailer at that, because this car won't be able to pull anything much bigger. Now, around to the interior, and as I said earlier, there's enough room for a six foot plus person in the front, but that does mean you've hardly any space in the back. Not much good if you want to show your brand new car off to your friends by taking them out for a night out in a nightclub. And of course, there's only three doors, so getting in or getting out can be a bit of a hassle. Or entertaining, depending on which way you look at it. Three o'clock in the morning when you're picking your friends up from a nightclub. Interior storage space, well, there's not much to write home about either. There aren't any real cup holders or storage bins. One of the criticisms of the old Fiesta was the lack of space, especially in the rear. Thankfully, not only has the rear legroom been increased, but so has the overall headroom. I am now pleased to say that there is enough room in the car for four full-sized adults. Hooray! Plus, to make things even easier, the Fiesta also has four doors. As for the boot, well, it's not massive, but it's a good shape and will hold more than a couple of shopping bags. And should you need to carry anything larger, the rear seat has a 60-40 split on it. The Matiz is the second largest of our three cars, and this is reflected in the level of interior space. Like the Fiesta, it has four doors. In the front, everything is just fine, with plenty of leg and headroom. It's when you move into the back that the problems occur. Not only do you find your knees rubbing against the back of the seats, but your head is also brushing against the roof. This is just about acceptable for very short journeys or even small children. A small car is never going to have the largest boot, and this is certainly the case with the Matiz. Having said that, there is enough room for a bit of shopping, and the rear seats fold down, allowing a bit more storage space. First place in the practicality stakes is the Fiesta. Not only does it have four doors and the biggest boot, but it will also seat four adults comfortably, something that cannot be leveled at the other two cars. 
In second place, we have the Mateus. Now, like the Fiesta, it has four doors, but unlike the Fiesta, the rear is somewhat limited and should only be used either by children or very small adults. This means that in last place is the Shichento. Although there is enough room in the front for six footers, there isn't much space in the back for anything else. It only has three doors, a cramped rear and tiny boot. This is really a small car. So far, it's the Fiesta that's out in front of the first time buys. But make sure you stay with us because later on in the program, we'll be discovering whether the Matiz or the Cinchento can overtake the Fiesta out in the road. But right now, it's time to join Mr. Coogan. And if you thought the Fiesta was an expensive first time buy, wait till you see what he has in store for us. He always knows how to pick him. I can't stand city cars. What is a city car anyway? A marketing man's term for a car that's too small, too weak, no fun to drive, shoddily put together. Well, this week, I found a city car that books all of those trends. In fact, it doesn't just book them, it smashes them. This Volkswagen Lupo TDI PD Sport is fast, very economical, fun to drive, and inside it has geometry-defying space. But for this week's alternative, I have gone over budget. At over 10 grand, this first time buy is not for those of us who have beans on toast to save a few quid. But if you can find those extra pennies, you will be rewarded with a small, solid car that puts a smile on your face. Now, the only reason anyone ever has a diesel is so that their sweater-wearing owners can bore us with just how many miles per gallon they're getting. Well, TDI owners will be dining out on this car for years. On its extra urban cycle, it squeezes out an incredible 78.5 miles per gallon. This car is not a friend to the Chancellor, but it is a friend of the earth. In second gear below 2,000 revs, it feels like someone's just hit it in the solar plexus with a cricket bat. But keep the revs up and it's pull all the way. The interior styling is as classy as you would expect in a VW. Materials are sound, panels tight fitting, ergonomics pleasant. Nothing is passing itself off as something it isn't. You know the sort of thing, plastics trying to be aluminium and wood made from, well, certainly not trees. Resale values of VWs are high, as we know, so you will get a lot more of your money back. But is it real value for money? I'm not so sure. 12 and a half grand is double the price of the Seicento that you've just seen. There's a very good reason for that, I know, but you get my point. Still, ignore the price for a moment and enjoy the performance because this diesel continues to bewilder. It is great fun. Sure, the ride is a bit of rock and roll, but the engine makes a seductive growl at high revs and the turbo complements the natural low down torque of the diesel engine perfectly. This car would be fine for a long journey, provided that there were only two of you. The back seat is strictly for the mini-me's of the family, and the boot? I'm still looking for it. I think they forgot to put one on. Now, obviously, over 10 grand is far too much money for any first-time car buyer. Second hand would be ideal. But what the Lupo TDI demonstrates brilliantly is that not all city cars need to be rattly and dull and about as much fun to ride as a camel. Speaking of camels, that's the other car's great virtue, its lack of thirst. An average of 64 miles per gallon means that if Lawrence of Arabia was going to have a car, he'd probably have a Lupo. Well, there you go, a not-so-cheap first time buy. But you never know, you might find yourself a cheap second-hand deal. Well, that's it from part one of Carfa, but make sure you join us after the break when I have the awful job of testing our three cars out on the road. See you in a minute. Hi and welcome back to Carfile. Now this week we've decided to take a break from testing high performance cars to see which is the best first time buy. Now so far in the series I have been spoiled for choice but this week really does bring me back down to earth. All of our cars are very practical and also very easy in the pocket. This week we've got the Fiesta, the Matiz and the Cinchento. So far we've tested them for practicality and styling, but now it's time for my favourite part of the show, the road test. Somehow I don't think it's going to be as exciting as it had been in the past, but I've been surprised before Ireland did get to the second round of the World Cup last year. Maybe I'll be surprised again. The pre 
previous Fiesta was always singled out for its great handling, and I have to say, well done to Ford. They've kept that tradition alive with a more sporty setup than you would normally find in a small hatch. The grip is excellent, and you'll find it reliable even in the harshest of situations. But despite the car's lackluster engine, I say it is quite a lot of fun to drive. The steering is extremely responsive. <laughs> it's a bit of roll there, I must say. And the gear change is quite slick. So overall, it's one of those cars that if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But value for money won't help you when you're in the countryside and stuck behind a tractor. I do highly recommend you don't try to overtake in this car because it takes forever to pick up speed. The best thing you could overtake is a snail probably, or a bicycle. Anything else is a bit much. The driving position, I don't like. I think you're too high up. It feels like you're in a 4x4, but you're not, which is quite confusing for some people. Well, it is for me, but that wouldn't be difficult. You know, I have to be honest, I really didn't expect the Fiesta to be so much fun. Okay, the engine isn't up to much, but in and around the city, it's actually quite nippy. And thanks to the sharp chassis and the slick gearbox, you'll never feel shortchanged with the Fiesta. So, from the biggest of our cars here today, to the smallest, it's the Fiat Cinchento. Driving around at the Cinchento is pretty much pain-free. Although the car is only powered by a 1.1 litre engine, it actually feels quite responsive. Don't get me wrong, it will never get your heart racing, but what it will do is get you from A to B peacefully. For a small car, the Sucento drives remarkably well. It has lovely direct steering that allows you to take the bends with confidence. The only downside is that the steering can feel a little heavy when parking. A bit of a problem when you consider that this car will be spending a vast amount of its time potting around the city streets. The Sucento's gearbox takes a little getting used to. It's certainly not slick. Loose would be a word I would use. And I have to say, I didn't like it one bit. After a while, driving the Matiz can become a little annoying. Although the small 800cc engine is willing enough, it just doesn't seem to be up to the job. On the flat, it's okay, but anything with a slight incline will mean that you'll be frequently changing down gears and you'll eventually get arm ache. And it's not as if the gear change is easy. It's very notchy and the gears are so far apart that after a long journey you might find that your arm has grown a few centimetres. Handling isn't great either. In the city centres it's pleasant enough, that is of course unless you hit a pothole. At this point the small wheels will go crashing in rather than over the potholes. And if you are lucky enough to hit the open road make sure you don't go too fast as the front end soon steps out. Let's be honest here, none of our cars are ever going to win awards for offering a great driving experience. But as I have to choose, there can only be one winner, and that has to be the Fiesta. Although the engine feels dated and lacklustre, a good chassis and gearbox mean that driving isn't a chore. Second place goes to the Cicento. Although it is soon to be replaced, the little Fiat still manages to be relatively fun to drive. Okay, maybe fun's the wrong word, but it certainly isn't the worst thing I've ever driven. Last is the Matiz. A combination of a tiny rough engine and sloppy gearbox means the Matiz isn't much fun to drive at all. If you are buying your very first brand new car, well the amount of cash you fork out will play a major role in your decision. With that in mind, let's have a look and see which one of our cars will have you laughing or crying all the way to the bank. And first up, it's the Ford Fiesta and straight away it loses points because it's the most expensive of our three cars here today at just under £8,000. But where it gains points is with its standard equipment. It comes with power steering, comes with driver's airbag and passenger airbag, and as well as that, unusually enough, it comes with a CD player. Now, in terms of running costs, which is very important when you're buying your first car, it does around 45 miles to the gallon. And insurance-wise, it does quite well. It's only in Group 2. Next up, it's the Matiz at just under £7,000. And like the Fiesta, it's got five doors, power steering and airbags. But where the Matiz differs is under the bonnet. Thanks to its weedy 800cc engine, it only returns about 36 miles to the gallon. But on the plus side, it does come with a really good service and warranty package. Last and the cheapest of our three cars here today is the Cicento. Despite being only £5,500, it still comes with a driver airbag and power steering. But the real plus side for this car is the fact that it's in the lowest insurance grouping, which makes it a very attractive buy. 
First place in the value stakes goes to the Matiz. Thanks to a low insurance group, decent standard equipment and a low price, the Matiz is an attractive option for those counting the pennies. In second place, it's the Fiesta. Although it's the most expensive here, it has a high level of specification and also the best average fuel economy. Plus, like the Fiestas of the past, you can be pretty sure that it will go on and on and on and on. Last is the Suchento, although it's the cheapest car here, as an overall package it fails to hit the mark. But if you are looking for a no-frills brand new car, then perhaps the Suchento is just the one for you. At this stage in the show, I'll probably get away with saying that the Suchento does absolutely nothing for me. So now that all the tests have been done, let's see how the score is added up. Well, top of the tree this week is the Fiesta. Combining good levels of equipment, vehicle dynamics and practicality, Ford has managed to make it worthwhile paying a little bit of extra. Second is the Deo Matiz. Although to drive the Matiz isn't anything special, it does offer a cheap and cheerful first time buy. If I could ask Deo for one thing, it would be for a bigger engine, as this would make the Matiz a more real world option. Last is the Suchento. Although it's the cheapest car here, it isn't the best first time buy. Although it's quite fun to drive, it is let down by poor practicality. But if the pennies are tight, then you could do a lot worse. So there you go, the Fiesta is our pick of the first time buys. Although it's the most expensive of our three cars here today, it comes with the best overall package. Well, unfortunately, that's it from Carfile for this week, but make sure you join us next week when I'll be testing the best SUVs on the market. It should be a lot of fun. We'll see you then.